Good morning, everyone. How are we all? I hope you're well. Um, quick little laugh this morning, just while I'm I'm pottering around doing a few things. I'm kid free at the moment, so I'm just trying to get the things done that I can't get with kids around, get done with kids around as much. So I thought while I'm cutting the back for a dresser, I would show you the best or slash easiest way to do it, um, or the way that I do it. Not every piece, you're not going to replace the back on every piece, but occasionally you get a piece, might have a big hole, the back might be really gross, which mine is, and I'll show you in a second. Um, but I thought, I know I've had this question a couple of times in the past, so, and I've never sort of shown this side of things, so I thought it was just a fun way, fun thing to show you, something a bit different from our usual, showing you the exact same products and techniques and stuff over and over again. This is another part of furniture flipping, um, and it's a good thing to have sort of in the back of your mind as well. Now, keeping in mind, if you do not have a saw at home of some description, I've got a circular saw here today. This is just a Ryobi one. If you don't have a saw or a jigsaw at home, I wish I could show you my jigsaw, but um, I still can't find it. <laughs> I don't know where it went. It's vanished somewhere between renovations at home and moving here. And I don't know where it's gone. I don't know if it's accidentally been stolen or if it's been left somewhere. Can't find it anywhere. So, circular saw for me today. But if you do not have a saw at home, don't have someone that you can borrow it off, you can, when you go to Buddings to get your piece of timber, you can get them to cut it. First cut's generally free. After that, I think it's like a couple of bucks a cut. But for the time, efficiency uh it is a great way to do it as well um, i'm not sure if other hardware stores also cut but i know that bunnings definitely does so you need to get your dresser or whatever the piece is that you are replacing the back on and i wasn't quite that organized let me grab it and show you what we're working with i'm not wearing my mic this morning i went to put it on and it's actually flat so that was not useful. All right, so this is what we're working with, upside down at the moment. It's a really cute vintage dresser, but it was in pretty bad shape. Um, I brought this like mid last year, and it's been sitting on the cupboard, but it's been sitting in my carport, and it was in rough shape when I got it. I don't think it's any worse than what, I, what it was when I got it, but it was one of those pieces that was on my list to do, and I just haven't had the chance to do it because as usual, you buy one project and then you buy 10 more and eventually you come back to the original one. <laughs> so, um, that was the front, this is the back. As you can see, I have pulled it apart. I have completely sanded it, including the drawers, which is here. So all the finish was coming off. It's beautiful oak, it's got stunning handles. Um, and I decided for this one, I want to showcase this timber. It's absolutely beautiful. It has been painted at some points. It's got a lot of um, paint in the grain, uh, which for me, I'm not going to sit there and try and remove. By all means, you can if you want, but I think it's part of the story. It's beautiful. Um, so for me, it's stained. But this is what we're working with. So that's the front. The sides, I, um, I knew there was a bit of damage on them. I actually put a coat of undercoat on them of Pure Eco Basin Blocker on the sides. And then I put my putty over the top. Sometimes you can see all the damage, but sometimes you can't see all of it. There was a lot of really fine cracks that I couldn't see. So sometimes putting a coat of paint on is enough to show you those, um, all those really little fine cracks. Normally I'm not super fussy with them, but on this piece, I just decided since I'm already filling, I'm just gonna fill them a little bit more. So as you can see, there's a fair bit of putty on there. Um, this side was pretty good. The other side had um, a couple of bigger, you can sort of see them, Ugh. a couple of bigger chunks taken out of it. So I've just put it over. I'll give that a light sand, probably another coat of my basin blocker, and then I'll paint that later. Um, but this is what we're working with, right? So this is our piece. Um... I don't know that, I will tell you in a minute. Uh, sorry, I'm just organising a couple of collections. Um, so, the back, I ripped off it. Mind you, 
actually as a, oh, and the tops off it as well. Um, where's the top, tops over there? I'm not picking it up because I've already picked it up once, pulled it off, and got sidetracked by the back of it as I was pulling it off, and uh, dropped the top of my toe, and I think I've broken my toe. So um, be careful when you pull the tops off pieces. But this is the back of it. This is the inside of it. I would say it's been laying down on its back with the drawers out for some time because it is absolutely disgusting. I don't even know what it is. It just looks like a built up of dirt, bird poop. This looks like some mold. It's just gross. Like I can't, I cannot leave that on there. I'm not gonna sit there and scrub it and clean it uh, because honestly, I don't think it would ever be clean. And I don't, um, excuse me hair, behave yourself. I don't um, just, yeah, no, yuck. Yeah, so it's come off. So if you can, try and pull your backing off in one piece as much as possible because it will make your job easier. Um, if you can't, worst comes to worst, just measure the back of the piece, okay? But what you wanna do, and mine has come off in one piece, it's just fallen apart then because I picked it up. Let me just shove this back on there. I've left, it's been, it's got like the main piece, but they're boards. And then they've got other pieces there. So I'm just going to, one of these has still got a little nail in it. Let me just shove that back into the nail hole. Where are we? Right. One complete backward. You can see how gross that is. There's no way I was leaving that in this piece. Um, if that wasn't in there, the back, like it was fine. It would have been fine. I would have been happy to leave the back on. But with that being that gross, there's no way I'm leaving that on there. So grab your piece, if you've got it all in one piece, and you're going to grab yourself a new piece of timber. Normally I use MDF or plywood, whatever the cheapest option is. And yes, it is cheaper generally to buy it in a larger piece because then you can get more pieces out of it. But um, if you're just doing one project, you don't have the space to store it, just get like the closest size that you can to what you're working on. So if you need like a 500 by one meter piece, get the piece of timber that's as close to that size as possible. That way you've got less excess um, and it just less wastage. Uh, but if you're working on multiple pieces like I am, a nice big piece is absolutely fine. Uh, this piece is actually marine grade ply, I think it was, which I don't know, I would never normally use for this have the sticker on it let me show you normally I wouldn't use this but I specifically wanted this piece for the top of a piece um, it's the piece over there I've shown you a few times I need my jigsaw to cut the round corners and of course I can't find it so I've got the wood don't have the jigsaw um, but I specifically wanted a really really nice grain so I've got the marine grade ply which is quite expensive in comparison to what you normally use there's the little label there for you Take a little screenshot if you need to. But it's got the nice grain. Normally I wouldn't use this for the back of a piece, but this is what I've got. I know I'm not, I'm only gonna use like a really small, this only comes in this size or bigger, um, or it did on the day that I went anyway. I'm only gonna use a really small amount of this for the top of my piece. So I'm gonna have leftover anyway. Um, I may as well use it. I've already brought it, already paid for it. May as well use it for the back of this piece. But normally, just buy whatever the cheapest wood or MDF that you can get um, for the size that you need, okay? So, what you're going to do is, and I've already done it, and I thought afterwards, oh, I should have showed you, so I'm just going to pretend to do it again. You're going to lay it down. You're going to take the back of your piece, and I know this is super self-explanatory, but I know some of you like, to see things like this. You're gonna take it and you're gonna sort of line it up. Now, the least amount of cuts possible is what you're aiming for here. So in this case, I'm gonna to need to do two cuts. Ideally, you wanna do one, but sometimes that's not possible. So, sorry, I have got something in my eye. I don't know what it is and it is driving me nuts. I think it's an eyelash and it's just driving me nuts. Do you like my hair dye? <laughs> I did well, but we got rid of that hor other horrible colour, so we're looking better. But this bit here is annoying me because I didn't see that last night when I did it, did I? All right, back to this. Least amount of cuts 
possible. And you're just sort of going to line it up on your board. So let me show you what I'm doing. Really self-explanatory. Line it up, lining up your edges. If you can get your backboard off in one piece, this is so much easier because then all you do is you trace around it, which I have already done, but you trace around it. Super easy. Use a pen or a pencil, whatever you've got going on. I don't like to use textures just because they can bleed and make a bit of a mess. But pen, pencil, trace around it. Super, super easy. If you don't have a nice big piece in one piece that's really, really easy, then take your tape measure, measure the width, the diameter. Yeah? Um, if you're not cutting it yourself, um, and you're getting, say, Bunnings to cut it, grab your measurements, take it to them, they'll be able to cut the board for you, okay? Um, so it's absolutely fine if you don't have it. That's not an issue. So, once you've traced it, you've got, and I don't know how well you can see it over here, we've got our nice big um, rectangle. <laughs> Then you're going to grab your sort. Now, I didn't think to check the battery on this before I did this. Oh, we're fine today. That's a nice change. Um, I like the Ryobi. We've got Ryobi everything uh, because the batteries are interchangeable and they're really, they're a really, really good price point. I do have a better blade on mine. My, right, oh, the blade that came with it lasted really quite a long time, actually. Um, but I was cutting something with it. I don't know what it was. I can't remember what it was. There was something that I had to... Oh, um, the bench top for our pantry. And I just wanted a really clean cut and the old saw. Old blade wasn't doing as well. So my dad recommended this one. And so far, I love it. Now, a jigsaw would be easier on a piece like this. But obviously, I don't have it. So this is what we're using. Absolutely fine. Make sure you got your ear and eye protection. And this is going to be loud, and I am going to do it on live because I want to. There's no point in stopping and then starting again and then showing you the dresser, it going on the dresser to show you how it fits. So, I apologise, but this is going to be loud. Turn your sound down. Hello, Diane. How are you, love? All right, so you're going to take your saw. Your saw's got a nice little thing here. You're going to line that up because that's where the blade is. Go line it up with your line, really easy, self-explanatory. I'm just going to take my cardigan off because I don't want sawdust all over me today. Um, normally, I would not cut this in the middle of the studio, but setting a table up outside for two seconds today is just not, not on my agenda. So, eyes, ears, covered, ready to go. Line your saw up. Make sure your fingers are nowhere near it. One cut, nice and easy. I always like to do my shortest cut first. Um, I don't know why, it's just something I do. Do whatever you like, really. All right, then we do the next one. Get out of the room. We need to move our old back because we no longer need that. Just watch for the old nails as well. Don't stand on those and put one of those into your feet. And now we're going to cut our other line. Is 
their board. All right, so your cuts don't have to be perfect. As you can see, that sword does like really chop it up quite a bit. That all sands off quite nicely. But the underside of it is looking pretty. So this is the side that we'll use, the side that you'll see. Okay, so that will be tucked away up against the piece. You're not gonna see it, but you will grab, you set up just a piece of sandpaper and just run it along those edges. If it's a little bit rough, it's just gonna clean up that edge nicely. Like so. As I said, your cut doesn't have to be perfect either. So you can, um, don't, don't stress too much. One pretty looking back. So then you're gonna grab your dresser. Oh, right. Now, I haven't pulled the nails out yet, but let's just do a little dry run first before you do any nailing or gluing, if you want to glue it as well. A little dry run along the top, along the bottom, sitting exactly where it was originally. Really, I could have cut this a little bit shorter so it was butted up against that. This is going about half a centimetre over, but like it's the back of it, you're not going to see it. It's nice and neat anyway, but we're going to fit really, really comfortably there. So... To get it ready, it's up to you whether or not you nail, you can use like a um, nail gun or a staple gun, up to you. I've got a staple gun. Um, and if I knew where it was, I would show you what it looks like. <laughs> I've got a box. Yeah, I'll show you the box because I can't find a staple gun. Where did I put it? I had it this morning. Right, staple gun, really cheap one. This does um, have nails as well, which are brilliant, but Staples are fine. Up to you which one you want to use. You want to have yourself a pair of pliers as well. I now have sawdust in my shoe, which is just fabulous. And you're just going to oh, pull all those nails out. Make sure when you're pulling old rusty nails out that you are careful with them. We don't want anybody getting any injuries. This is like, I don't know where my other hammer is. There we go. Oh, I hate pulling out old nails. There's nothing fun about it. But you just want to pull all those out. Obviously, I wasn't prepared for this live. Normally, I would be ready to go, but here we are. I wish I knew where my nail gun was, but we'll find that in a minute. This is really, really hard timber that this is made out of as well. Getting the back off this was an absolute pain in the ass because the timber and the nails are like, all the nails are stuck in there still. Right, no more there, just there. Oh, Jesus. Oh, right, nails out, looking pretty. So um, I'm just going to give this a quick wipe. Let me grab my cloth and go and wet it. I'm just going to give it a wipe just to clean it a little bit. It's a bit dusty for me. Give me two seconds. along there just because it's a bit dusty and dirty and gross just to clean it not something you have to do but because that back piece was so disgusting it's just gonna help clean all that off a little bit more and when I put the back off it does make sense just to like I vacuumed it but it makes sense just to go over it again over those runners while I can fully access them really really easily as well All right, much better. All right, so we've got our back piece again. Get off the dirt. Now, I want the pretty size. There's a couple of little like nicks out of it, but it's pretty good compared to the other side. You gotta line up, work out where you want it. I don't typically glue backs on, I just nail them on. But work out where you want it, and then 
Um, I'm looking for my nail gun. Let me find it. Where did I put it? I must have put it away. Oh no, here it is. It's all right, price is <laughs> Is the cord long enough to reach that far? Nobody knows. I think we might move it down. Hang on, we're just gonna have a quick shuffle. Because the cord on this is like, oh, come on. reach table. It is, but it's not going to be very long. This is what we're working with, right? Um, this is like, I feel like it was 20, 30 bucks. Like it wasn't much at all. Um, it was like, it's an Ozigo, right? So it's a cheap brand anyway, but it was, yeah, 20, 30 bucks. And it's brilliant. I've used it so many times. It's got quite a bit of power behind it. It does like, um, it does need a little bit of weight put behind it as well. Let me just bring you over here so you can see what we're doing. It does like a little bit of weight put behind it as well. So if you can have your piece down on, down on somewhere where you can push, it definitely makes the job a little bit easier. Let's see what I've got in there. So I've just got staples today. Nails are better, but I'm not better slash easier, but I'm not going to Bunnings today. Um, I don't need to fall down that um, rabbit track this morning. So I'm just gonna grab a few nails. Uh, what do we call them? Staples put in them. See how they go. If this timber's too hard for them to go in, then yes, I'll do nails, or I'll go get my Ryobi one out, um, which is a battery operated one, and it's really, really powerful, and I can adjust the settings. But let's see how we go with this to start with. So, you're going to line it up. Make sure that you're not going like over the top of your top edge. Otherwise, when you put your top back on, if you've taken it off, um, it's not going to go on. So, and you don't want to have to pull this back off to put it back on either. So, <coughs> right. So I like to leave just a little gap there along the top. Also checking where my sides are. Sort of, if you look at where the nails were originally, cover those up sort of thing. Is the best way to do it. Go up just a little bit. As I said, we do have a little bit of overhang here at the bottom, but I'm not overly concerned about that. I know that I've got a base here. And sometimes you'll have, um, on bigger pieces, you'll have uh, some sort of support down through the middle either way. If you can, try and work out where that is and pop a couple in there as well. It's just going to stop the whole back from bowing. This piece is obviously a lot smaller, so it doesn't have that. So we're just doing along the edges. Typically, wherever it's been nailed, from when it was manufactured is where you sort of want to be putting your nails again. Uh, generally, there is a reason for it. Now, this is loud again. I apologize, Borrows. Oh, also going, and yes, I have the door wide open because it's sunny and it is a beautiful weather here today. All right, so this one does like a little bit of weight behind it, so do push down on it. Just stops it from jumping too much, like so. If you don't, it will just sort of jump and it won't, um, the nail won't go all the way in, which obviously defeats the purpose. Like so. If I don't quite go all the way in, you can then go along afterwards and uh, hammer them a little bit as well. But this, like this nail gun, I'll find the link and I'll post it for you guys. It is so good. It was really cheap. I brought it on a whim. I was doing um, a beat safe and I had to completely do, redo all of the netting with new timber as well. Normally on beat safe, I try to, um, what do I try to do? I try to uh, reuse the bits of timber that hold the netting in place. But this one that I was doing, I had to redo all of that. And um, 
which is fine. But because I had to redo it all, I didn't really want to sit there for hours, like hammering little tiny nails in. So I got this on a whim just to see. Best thing I brought. Best thing I brought. Such a good thing to have in your toolkit. And to be honest, I use this more than what I use my really powerful Ryobi one, my great big one. Let me show you that one so you know what I'm talking about. This one's my Ryobi one. This is what I'm talking about. So it's big, it's heavy, it's very powerful. Fully adjustable, which I love. And if I'm working on bigger projects that need that bit more power, this is brilliant. Um, again, it's battery. Um, so the battery that I just used in my saw and then in my drill is brilliant. But it's heavy, it's big. Ones like this where you're going straight down is easy. But anytime you're sort of trying to go up or on a side after a while, like my arm hurts just holding this for a couple of minutes. So as great as that is, this weighs maybe, I wouldn't even say it's a kilo, like maybe 500, 800 grams, no more than a block of butter. Um, and it's got quite a bit of power behind it too. And it does a really, really good job. And as I said, you can use nails in it as well. Um, you can buy the specific nails, but this is brilliant. Our back's on. I like to go along, just double check. I don't like to have any big gaps in it. I like to have a nail or staple sort of every 10-ish centimetres. That way it just stops it from buckling off later on as it goes. But we have the back on our dresser. So I've got to put the top back on. The top needs to be um, nailed on, but I'm actually going to glue it as well. Just to make sure it stays on. And then um, I've got to sand the sides and we're ready to do a little bit of painting and a timber finish. I'm thinking, I'm thinking sepia, but I'm not sure. Still deciding, but I've got other projects to do today. So I'm gonna start those. I'm gonna come back to this once I decide and we will definitely do another live later on, finishing this one up because I think it's, it's a bit of fun, a bit different, um, nearly a full restoration versus just painting everything, which is all we've done lately. So we'll see how we go. I hope that was helpful and somewhat informative. Um, as I said, I don't replace the backs very often, but sometimes they're pretty gross like this one was, um, or they've got holes in them and it's worth replacing. Because I do this to sell, I always like to put the best product forward. Uh, whereas if it was just for myself and it had a hole in it or something like that, I'd probably just leave it. If it was gross like that, I would still replace it. There's no way I was gonna clean that. Um, replacing it's cheap it's easy um, and it's well worth a few minutes of effort like that took what 15 minutes and start to finish and I, it's done and now I can move on and finish the project um, that's it for me thank you so much for joining me please let me know if you've got any questions ignore this part that's going to drive me nuts but at least now my hair's on one color instead of what it did last time <laughs> um, Alright, that's it. I need to go do something else now. Have a lovely day, everyone. Bye.